so thanks for coming to the Hack and Tell talk. Um, so for this hack, the pain point I had was I was trying to play this um, free RTS game called Liberation Circuit. It's a it's a RTS game um, where you're in this computer. You're supposed to fight the other processes. Anyway, um, long story short, so they it's on itch.io, but they only had um, Mac and Windows binaries, so there was no Linux binary. Uh, now there is. Now there is. Yes. yes. So yeah, yeah. Right. Because of you see, so is it like because I provided Linux um, binary. Oh. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so so open source. So you can go to the GitHub page and then um, so the author was very nice. The author had an instruction for how to compile on Linux. So you must install all this stuff and then you need to uh, run the compiler and so on. Okay. So I did that on my own machine, so I could play on my own machine. But then I thought, mm, wouldn't it be great if we could have a listing on the website where you could download and anyone can download and just play without having to go through all the steps? Because it can be quite tedious, like, I mean, to install packages and compile and clone from GitHub and so on, right? Okay, because there's two um, link, what? Windows and Mac. So it would be nice that if there's a third link for the Linux one, right? Okay. So, but you know, if you compile something on, on Linux for your machine, you can't just take a binary and like put it on somebody else's machine, it wouldn't run, right? Because they don't have, they, ha they haven't installed the packages and so forth. Um, but is there some way around that? So it turns out there's another project, uh, which is the main tool for this hack, which is called Exodus. Exodus is a, it's a tool that lets you literally migrate a, a binary from one machine to another machine. So I think it's a bit small. Um, so here, I think the, the author is trying to show you could migrate these two called ARIA 2C um, to this remote server, just running this command. Essentially what it does is it, it traces through the, the required dependencies and the dependencies of the dependencies and so forth and bundle all of it up into one giant package and um, sends it over. So it bundles all the dependencies together, assuming the same architecture on the remote machine. Okay, so I tried this on the on the game um, binary. Okay, so it's on the game binary, and it, and it sort of works, except there's this caveat. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom, there's this problem with with glibc. So uh, this game is written in C. So um, and most things uses glibc. Glibc is the GNU C library. The C library actually talks directly to the kernel. So it's the C library version you have. Um, limits the oldest kernel you can support. So if I compile on my machine, which I use a fairly new version of glibc, people on older kernels could not actually run it because it uses a rather new version of glibc. So it works, but not quite. So, but they did give a work around here. So it says you can, you can create your Docker Exodus bundles in a Docker container. So that's essentially what I did in the end. So the hack was sort of listed on there. So here is basically the, the end result. Um, so there is a Docker file that uses Debian stable, which is a uh, one of the oldest uh, kernel and glibc you can find on Docker Hub. Uh, so it installs a bunch of the libraries. Uh, the interesting thing here is that here it installs Exodus. Oh, take note, it's called Exodus underscore bundler. If you pip install it, it's not called Exodus. There happens to be a package called Exodus on PyPy. So don't install that. That's the wrong one. It's Exodus underscore bundler. Uh, and the key magic happens here, exodus dash t, dash t means creates a tarball. Uh, give it the name of the binary, it crawls through the whole system, creates this giant tarball, then combined with the rest of the... The games also need some game data files, uh, like what are the missions, what are the levels. So I just combine all of those into one big package, which generates this um, zip file at the end. Uh, which now you see on the um, website. So, so give it a try if you like um, RTS games. So one quick sell of the game is that you actually have to design your own units to clear the levels. There are, no, there are only like a couple pre-made units. The rest you have to design as you gain more components. Okay, that's it for my talk. Yes, question. So Five I minutes for questions. I can see why you might want to do this if you Excellent. But you're building from source, so how is that better than just building from source and linking statically? Oh, you, do, you don't have to change the build process. Like, well, I didn't want to mess with their build process. 
Yeah, but it works with any binary. So I use it in another situation where I had to run something on a high performance, high performance cluster. I had this binary, a third party software. I wanted to run a high performance cluster. On the cluster, you can't install anything, you can, but you can copy binaries over. So I use the same technique to actually take the binary instead of recompiling on the cluster itself. Sometimes it can be quite hard to get things to compile on the machine where you don't have root access. Oops, what happened? Then it's not that different, but statically, usually you don't link. Even you can't bring your own glibc when you statically link. I think glibc will still be the system one normally. I think. Yeah, th there is this issue with glibc that many calls stop working in glibc after you link statically or rely on dynamic version of glibc to actually provide functionality. So you need to be careful if you are not using libmusl or something, some library that is designed to link statically, your program may fail. So this one you get the, your, it bundles glibc as sure, well. Sure, yeah. It bundles glibc. So how big is the binary? Uh, so how big is it compared to the, can't remember. the dynamically linked binary? Much bigger. So it, no, the binary is the same size, just that in the folder, in the in the folder structure, there's all the other SO files. Yeah. Mm. How Okay, okay. I have that somewhere. I just have to the tarball. Oh she can see it on the website, what well, anyway. <laughs> it's on the website. Does it say on the website? Yeah, it does. It says right. Yeah. Oh, how come it's so small on the other on the other architecture? Okay, never mind. Okay. Uh, but you know, fourteen. I mean, what is it these days? These days we've done hundreds of megabytes, right? I mean, like. Anyway, yeah. Good question. I don't, I didn't realize it's much bigger than the other two. It could have brought a lot of extra other stuff as well. I guess. Is it uh, no, on Windows, Allegro is not part of the standard library, so it has to bundle all the Allegro binaries. Yeah. Yeah, no idea why it's so big. Uh, also, Exodus is interesting if you want to create some kind of like a minimal Docker container as well. You just take your binary and stuff all the SO files from in, into a scratch template that works as a container as well. Yeah. You try compiling against muscle. Um, no, I, again, I didn't. One of the things was I didn't want to change the compilation. Yeah, it uses something called redo, which is a little bit strange. Yeah, do redo scripts. Um, I really didn't want to change the code, so yeah. You could, but it doesn't solve the problem of bringing all these Allegro libraries along. I mean, you have to somehow package all your Allegro libraries. This is this li library for game development called Allegro, actually. Yeah, which is normally dynamically linked. Yeah. But Exodus is really good for lots of other stuff. Like, I mean, not just, I use it particularly for this particular game, but you could use it to run programs on machines where you don't have um, ability to install software. So I do recommend checking out um, Exodus. So it's Exodus underscore bundler if you pip install it, by the way, just to say that. Because I keep forgetting and I mess it up myself. Um, I, I would like to, to know what is your like, time estimate for, you know, for how much you had to debug it and how long would it take to repeat the process for the new version? Oh, very little, because it's, it's just downloading a zip file. I just changed the, the, the number here. Uh -huh. Yeah. No, this, so this is a script, so it's all, um, it's automatic. So I just it's need to change. automatic and it's on in Docker, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, and it's, it's automatic. And it's actually CI, so it continuously delivers new versions of the software. Well, the author isn't really actively developing, so 1.3 is the, the last version. Yeah, but the GitHub is still open for contributions if you are, like writing games in C. Yeah. Any more questions? <laughs> oh, but do try also do try liberation circuit. Yeah, it's really cool. Oh, I should play. It. Never mind. You can go back and play it. <laughs> That's not I should have played it while I was talking. Yeah, it has really cool like vectory graphics things. Okay. Yeah, if you like this kind of graphics. And there's a custom units where you, you, you put it together visually on the UI. Yeah, okay. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Thanks.